Hi there. Welcome to Sunday Afternoon Live on Facebook here at AAA Hobbies in Magnolia, New Jersey. Today we're going to take a look at molding, basics of molding and casting. And as I said, we're here at AAA Hobbies in Magnolia, New Jersey on Route 30. Come on down. I have these materials in stock. Um, so why make a mold and cast copies of a part? It's pretty obvious you want to make duplicates of a part. So if I'm building something big, let's say I'm building a building and I have a piece here that I'll show you as an example. This is a mold that I made of a part that I made. And I'll open up this mold and I'll show you, actually, this is the original part. What this is, is this is a buttress or a roof um, buttress that goes inside of a building and in particular it's for inside of a church and it holds up the roof on the outside and there's multiples of these inside of the building and let's say I needed a dozen of these or more well it took me a little while to make this this original and this original was made in ABS plastic it was a sheet of plastic and I basically carved this out and machined out the center and so forth and it took a little while to do it, it took a couple hours to make this part well, if I need like a dozen of them, think about it. That's a lot of work to make a whole bunch of these. So I decided to make a mold of this original, and then I can just cast off as many as I need. And this is the mold that I made. I'll take out the casting here. This is the mold I made of that part. As you can see, it goes right inside of it. So multiples of a part. That's one reason to make casting. Second reason is I need extras, um, you know, duplicating a part. If I make something out of a material that I can't paint, in other words, let me, let me give you an example. Um, if I sculpt a figure, and when I sculpt figures, I usually do them in wax. It's a clay wax material I use. I make a wire armature, and then I carve the, the figure out of it. But the problem is it's wax, so, you know, I can make dents in it here, I can carve it. It's not something that I can prime and paint and use. I have to make a hard copy of this out of, say, plastic or resin. So if you're making something out of a material like wax, you know, jewelry makers make a lot of things out of wax, and they do what's called lost wax castings. So I can make my original, then make a rubber mold, and cast a hard copy. And I can also make multiples of it. So if a friend of mine's making something and needs a copy, I can give it to him. That being said, if you start to make copies of things that aren't yours, you do that for yourself. In other words, you can't um, legally go out and buy something, say buy a figure kit or something, and make copies and sell them to your friends. That's illegal. That's pirating a figure. You don't want to do that. The only reason you do this is for yourself. Say I, you know, I have a mold here of figure bases. These little round bases that you use for, you know, your war game, Warhammer or Wargaming figures. The reason I made these was so that I can modify them, make them a little different, and have um, bases for figures that I have that don't have bases. I can make as many of these as I want as long as I don't sell them to people. I use them for myself. I can give them to my friends but I can't sell them. You can't make a profit on this stuff. So keep that in mind. Don't make copies for sale. That's illegal. Unless it's your own original piece, then you're fine. Okay. That being said, let's take a look at the materials that we use to make the rubber mold. I'll start with making a mold. And this is silicone rubber. You see it's a blue color, very flexible, and you can make different types of molds with silicone rubber. And myself personally, I make three different types of molds. I make a single piece mold, which is, let me get it off the table here. And let me just um, backtrack a little bit here, I digress. We are at AAA Hobbies in Magnolia, New Jersey on Route 30. You can come on down and talk to me about this. Come on down, we have the materials. Leave me questions, post your questions. I will go back after I'm done, I'll answer questions. And like I say, AAA Hobbies, Magnolia, New Jersey. Okay, so the three types of molds that I make. The first type of mold is a single piece mold, an open top mold. And you can see these are the little bases for the figures. And what I did was 
I took a sheet of styrene plastic. And that's one of the basic materials that you use when you're making a mold is styrene sheet. And you'll see I use it for another purpose also when doing this. So I took a sheet of styrene and I glued down the bases onto the styrene. And you notice I left a little border around it so that I have room. And you can see the shadow. I already made the mold. This is the mold of these pieces. But you can see the shadow line here where I had plastic glued on there. And the plastic I glued is sheet plastic. And you need to make a box around the parts so that you can pour the rubber in and it, you know, makes the mold. So just as an example, this is sheet styrene that I cut to size and then I glued it right on top of this piece here and I glued it all the way around and you make a square box. So there's a box built and I just glue it with regular liquid cement, something like Tamiya. I use Tamiya cement, use a lot of Tamiya products. Just use regular liquid cement, glue the box together and glue it down to the base and let that settle. And once the box is dry, you pour your rubber in there and you pour it so that it's a little bit above, you know, maybe give it a half an inch to an inch above the part, pour it in, and you let it sit. And the rubbers cure at different rates. Um, the rubber that I'm using, the silicone rubber, is made for ease, ease of use, let's put it that way. Um, there's different rubbers for different applications. And what I'm talking about is mostly hard parts like styrene or my wax pieces, things like that, that aren't porous. If you get into casting, you know, um, like styrofoam, concrete, you know, really odd materials, there are different rubbers for that. And I'll show you the rubber I use and the company's name, and you can go to their website, you know, if you have different applications. But this is really basically showing you how to make a simple mold of a simple part, you know, just so you can get the theory. So you build the box, you pour the rubber, and I'll put this on top. Once I get the rubber, once the rubber is cured, I pry off these plastic parts, all four of them, and you see I have square rubber mold. Pull that off, and bang, you have your mold. And what I can do with this is, and I'll, we'll do this, I'll show you this in a little bit. We'll mix the resin material and you just pour it into these cavities. And when they're done, you'll end up popping out a copy, just like that, okay? So that's the first type of mold, is a single single piece mold with an open top. Now, if you're doing parts that have detail on both sides, you're going to want to do a two-piece mold. And that's what this piece is. This is a two-piece mold. If I take the top off, it kind of looks like the other mold. But if there's detail on the top of it, I want to have another piece on top that catches that detail. So that's a two-piece mold. Okay. Right. Now, the other type of mold that you can do, and I don't really have an example here, but I've got kind of work with it, is a single piece mold. And for a single piece mold, you mount your piece and you build the box around it and you pour the rubber in and cover it all the way. And when you come out, you'll have a solid block. And what you do is you just split it on the top so that you can pry it apart. Then you can pour your resin into it, let it harden just pop the top and pull the piece out. That would be a single piece mold. So it encapsulates the whole part. Okay, so we have single piece mold, double piece mold, solid mold. So those are the three types of molds that I use. So what type of rubber am I using? I use this material here. And this is called Umu. And Umu is a funny name for a really good product. Um, there's different types of Umu, Umu 25, Umu 30, and this is made by a company called Smooth On. Smooth On makes all different materials for casting and molding, and this is what we carry here at the store. I like Smooth On because you can make rubber molds and parts without having to vacuum the rubber and get the air out or degas the resin to get bubbles or air bubbles out. That's one of the, the real um, things that you have to watch out for when you're making molds and casting is air. Air creates bubbles in the mold and it'll create um, voids in the part or in the rubber mold itself. And the reason I like these smooth on products like Umu, they're designed to be used without degassing and vacuuming. Um, and degassing is when you use a big 
vacuum tank or a big degassing tank and you put the rubber into it after you mix it and you put a vacuum on it to suck the air out and it pulls the air out of the material. Well, this stuff mixes nicely without that, which is really, you know, it, it's, it's a real positive. Um, it's really hard sometimes when you're using different materials to get a good pour without vacuums or air in it, or, you know, little voids. So that's why I use Umu. You don't have to vacuum it. You don't have to degas it. So Umu is a two-part material. It's blue in a yellow container. I'll show it to you here. Let's see. It says Umu 25 on it. There's Umu 25, Umu 30, and that has to do with the setup time on it, how long it takes for this stuff to get hard and set up. Um, you can see it's two part, and it's a 50-50, one-to-one -one mix. So I mix one part of this to one part of this, which makes it really easy. Some people like to use a scale. They'll take their cup, measure it, um, pour in the material so they get an exact measurement. I find that you don't have to worry too much as long as you use a good eye and use like a... Um, a container that has gradients on it. This is a smooth on container. I'll take this stuff out of it. The smooth on container has gradients on the side right here. As you can see, it goes up. So if I mix, it's in two ounce increments. So if I mix two ounces and then two ounces, it's good. And you'll, you'll be able to eyeball it on that. And that's really good. I mean, to be able to do it that way is fast. It's easy. So, to make a rubber mold, you mix 50% of this, 50% of this, you put it in your container, pour it in. I use old uh, paint stars that I buy at the local big box store, you know, the hardware store. You put it in and you mix it all up really well. And what you need to do is when you're mixing it, you need to make sure you scrape off the edges of the container so you get all that material mixed up really well and you take your time and you mix it really good because it's only going to be as good as you do the mixing so you mix your a and b together and then as i said after you've built your container for the mold you know just imagine that there's a box built around this and you just pour it into the box and you let it harden for a couple hours and then you just take the piece and take the mold right off bang so that's your mold rubber it's Umu. Don't forget Umu. Sounds funny, but it's a great product. All right, so that's the rubber. Let me put this guy back. Get him out of the way. All right, so I've made a mold. And I'll show you one here that I did as an example with a friend of mine. This is um, two pieces of a figure. This is a head and a torso for a model figure. And I want to make copies of this. And it's, it's what's called an academy figure. It's basically a, a naked nude figure that you can pose. And there's arms and legs that go with this. It's in another mold. And I can make copies of this guy, multiple copies, and then pose them and use you know either my wax or, say, an epoxy putty to dress the figure and so forth. But I want to make copies so that I can make multiple figures. And the first thing you do when you make a two-part mold of pieces like this guy is you set them up. See, we, we did a setup. This is a long <laughs> procedure, and I, I don't want to get too wordy, but um, we did a setup on this part. And as you see, we mounted the parts right to the plastic and built the box around it. So we didn't have to worry about a bed to put the parts into because we were gluing them straight down because the bottoms are flat. Well, this guy, I'm going to pull this torso out. This guy's not flat. You know, he's got a lot of shape to him. I can't just stick him down flat on a, a surface. So what you have to do is, the first thing you need to do with a part like this is think about, it's going to be a two-piece mold. So you have to think about where is my part line going to be. When I make the casting of this, there's going to be a phantom line or, you know, a seam line that runs around it. And you don't want that seam line to intersect anything important. Like if I'm doing the head, I don't want the seam line to go up his face or anything. That's going to be really hard to clean off. So with the head, I decided that the seam line should go down and around his ear and then down his neck. That way when he comes out, the part comes out, it's easy to clean off. And if I make a mistake, it's not as obvious as if it's in his face. So the first thing you do with a two-part mold on a part like this is you get yourself 
some clay. And this is plastilina, and you can use any kind of non-hardening art clay. And as you can see, I have a block of it here, and you can see I cut out a block of it. And that's what this is right here. I took the clay, and I just cut a piece out to the, sh to the size I needed. And then I sat these guys down on top of it, and I took a little scraper, and I scraped around the outline of it, and then I carved out some of the material so that I could put the body down into it, and I go down about halfway. Then I take a little tool, and I go back, and I push the clay down around the edges so that it's, you know, up tight. It's, it's right around the part itself. Same with the, the head. So as you can see, they're, they're mounted halfway down into the clay, the bed of clay. And the other thing that you need to do when you're doing a two-part mold is you need to put in little um, mold locks is what they're called. These mold locks are so that when you pour the first half, it's going to leave a cavity that the second half will fill in. And when it does that, you end up with these little locks. As you can see, I've got a couple castings in here. You put the mold locks in, these guys, these little silver acorn nuts. I like those. They, they, they're a nice size and a good shape for mold locks. I put them in, and then when I, after I pour the first half, you can see there's a cavity where those little metal nuts were. And when I pour the second half, I take those nuts away. I leave the body in there, but I take the nuts away. I pour the second half, and that, that fills them in. So as you can see, I've got little mold locks built. And those mold locks help this mold line up straight so that when I pour the part, it's not shifted. You don't want a mold shift. In other words, if this mold doesn't line up correctly, your, your part's going to be screwed up or, or messed up. So those little acorn nuts are important to make mold locks. So I digress. We'll go back here a little bit. We've got this mold. We've got this little pad or bed of clay, and we put our part in. And we figured out where the parting line was going to be, and we pushed him in and pushed the clay up along the edges of the part so that there's no gap. Put my mold locks in. The next step after you do that is to take a sheet, piece of sheet styrene. I use sheet styrene for a lot in this process. I cut a piece to the size of this bed, and I, I leave maybe about a half an inch all the way around. And then I do the same thing that I did with those other parts. I build a little box around the part, or around the bed, we'll say. I, I probably can't do this whole box, but I'm going to try. So I'll build a box around the part with the sheet styrene, like that. And it'll be all glued together and tight, so there's no gaps, right? And I'll glue it down to the base. So that's what you end up with. You end up with a box around that bed. Once you do that, then you can take a little bit of this mold release. And this comes with, if you buy a starter set of Umu and resin, you'll get this with it, or we sell it separately. Basically, mold release. You just shoot a little bit of this mold release right onto the part itself, this whole top part. That way, it's easier to pull the mold apart after you pour the second half. Okay? So a little bit of mold release. Okay, so I built the box, I got the part in it. The next thing I do is I mix my one-to-one -one of the Umu, mix it up in here, and then I pour it into the, the mold, and I let it sit. And once that is done, once it's done, and I've poured it, let's say this is the top half I poured, I pry these pieces off, pop them off, because they're glued down. You pop them off and you can see what I end up with. I end up with the first half of the mold poured on top of the clay bed. And what I do is pry this off. Then I take the rubber piece and I take my part and I put him in there. Because we're going to pour the second half. I do that. I put this piece and this piece in here. And you can see I also cut channels into here. You can either cut or put, I use, um, I don't think I have one here, but I use a little piece of wooden dowel or rod, and I just put it down into the clay so that I have a pre-built channel. 
you can do that or you can cut it afterwards. It's easier just to put like a little wooden dowel into the clay. You can see the groove in the clay. Let's see, going down into the body. That's where it fills. In other words, the I'm going to shoot or inject the resin into here. It's going to fill the cavities and then shoot out his head or vice versa, either way. So after you do the first half, put the parts into the first half. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the clay. We're going to put it onto this bed. We're going to build the box around it and then pour the second half of the mold. So after I've done the second half of the mold, I take the plastic off of the mold, take it apart. And after you pour the second half, this is what you're going to end up with. You're going to end up with two halves together. And then you just pry them apart as well as, you know, it's going to take a little effort, but you pry them apart, take the part out, and you end up with a two-piece mold. And like I say, these metal locks are important. If you pour the first half, you take these out. That way they fill in when you pour the second half. All right? So that's a two-piece mold. I hope that wasn't too confusing. It's a lot of information to try to do on a live stream here. So I just made a two-part mold of that body. And these, these are the original pieces. These are copies that I made after the fact. These are copies of these originals. It's hard to see. So this is the original, this one, <laughs> and this is the copy. All right. So now I can make, you know, a dozen figures if I want to, to, to assemble and clothe and make whatever I want them to be. All right, so we've done the one part mold, the two part mold. The other thing I'm gonna talk about is casting a part. To cast a part, it's not as hard as it sounds, but I will warn you that it can be messy. You wanna make sure that you have something covering your decent clothes. You wanna make sure that you're using rubber gloves. And I'm gonna, I'm going to get rid of this light over here because it's distracting me. Um, to do a part with resin, I'm going to clean my work table off here so that I can do this for you and show you how we do it. And I would suggest, I always use sheets of cardboard under myself because I know I'm going to make a little bit of a mess doing this. So... Clean your work workbench off. Get things out of the way. Make yourself some room. Put down a sheet of cardboard. The material we use to cast hard parts is called Smooth Cast. This is Smooth Cast 300. This is also by Smooth On. Great product. It's another product that, if you're using industrial resins and things, it usually requires that you um, vacuum or degas the material to get air out of it. This stuff mixes up really nice, and as long as you're like, as long as you don't shake it too much and get a lot of air bubbles in it, you should be able to mix it and pour it and not get too many voids in the mold. That's one of the reasons we like this. It's it's a one to one mix like the other, you know, one part A, one part B. You mix it together, and you've got probably about um, two minutes, maybe two three minutes to get it poured into the mold. And when I inject the mold, I use these little syringes these are little model syringes we have them at the store i think i got these online um they're nice if they have a rubber tip that way the material doesn't stick and you peel it off after it's hardened so you're going to use a little syringe to suck up the resin and then you just basically inject it into the mold push it in and you'll see it come out the other hole that i made because there's two channels um if you're going to do it with and we'll probably do it today with these guys, with these little bases, because I can just pour the resin into these bases and let it harden up. So what we'll do is we'll open this material up. Once again, it's, they give you two nice colors here, yellow and blue, so you don't mix them up. And you want to use, this is smooth cast, part A and part B. And this is a white casting resin. In other words, after I mix this and put it into the mold, It'll be clear out of the jar, and when it hardens up, it turns white. Now, you can also, if you don't want to have white, you can use dyes. You can use these color dyes in the resin to make it a different color. 
You got to be careful with these because you can see I keep them in bags because if you get it on yourself, you're not going to get it off. It's it's pretty nasty stuff as far as that goes. Um, I have three different colors that I use. I have yellow, I have black, and the black, if you just use a little bit, you can do gray and brown, which you can do tan with if you just use a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll take the black and we'll use a little bit. I'll pour, I'll pour half of them regular so they turn white and I'll put a drop in after we pour those and mix it and we'll do gray so I'll show you how you can color the resin um, let me take this out of the package before I do that very important I put on rubber gloves I don't like getting casting resin or silicone rubber or any of these dyes on my hands it's not good for you so make sure you put on some gloves these are cheap buy them at the hardware store you know big box store whatever it's regular gloves all right now since i'm only using a little bit of this resin resin goes a long way it's surprising if you mixed up this whole cup you could do a big mold um what i do is i use regular little dixie cups these little paper cups that's what i like to use for the resin and i mark them on the outside with a big marker i use one of these heavy felt markers and for this one i measured a half an inch and a half an inch and as you can see, I marked the outside, half inch, half inch. And then when I look on the inside, I can actually see those marks. See them down in there? There's two marks. That way, when I pour the resin, I can see how much I'm putting into the cup. So I'll pour up to the first mark and then get the other and pour up to the second mark. And I'll show you that right now. What we'll do is, let me get this out. Something else you're going to use a lot if you do this are popsicle sticks or stirring sticks. And we sell these at the store, big boxes of craft sticks. I use these for everything. If you follow us on Facebook and you watch the live, I use craft sticks constantly. I use them to mix paint. I use them to mix glue. I use them to mix this stuff. So get yourself a box of craft sticks. You won't regret it. They're cheap and they go forever. It's a great tool, great disposable tool. So we're here at AAA Hobbies in Magnolia, New Jersey. We're talking about making a mold and making a casting. This is the casting half. We've already made a rubber mold, and this one is a rubber mold of these little Warhammer bases. So we're going to make copies of these. As you can see, that's the negative mold made in silicone rubber with Umu. Funny name, great product by Smooth On, Smooth On Company. So this is part A, the yellow. What we're going to do is we're going to open it up, and I'm just going to pour the first half with the yellow part A. All right, so I poured that up to the first mark. And make sure you close off your thing. Something else you're going to use a lot of, if you do this, are paper towels. I use them constantly because I don't like resin spilling or getting on anything. All right, so we poured the first part A. Now we're going to pour part B. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to mix another half. And I'm just going to watch inside up to the second line all right so now i've poured 50 50 or one to one a and b in casting resin put this over here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to mix this up and always make sure you mix really well because this stuff if you don't mix it good it won't kick and it'll ruin your mold and scrape the sides of the container so that you get it all mixed up and this has no dye in it so i'm going to do I'll do two of these with this, and I don't really have to use the syringe to do this because the syringe is more for the, the regular molds, but I'll do it anyway just to show you. Pull it up. As you can see, I've got casting resin in the syringe, and we'll just pour the resin right into the mold. I'll do two of these. Looks like I need a little bit more. And just fill them up to the edge. Okay. Now, what I'll do, that's it. I'm going to take a little drop of this black. Put a little drop of this coloring in. The dye. take my popsicle stick and mix it you can see instead of clear now it's really dark 
but it's not going to be pure black because I only put a drop in. If I put a few drops in, I could get it a lot darker because I want it to be gray. I don't want it to be black. So I'm going to do this. I'm just going to pour this straight in so you can see you don't have to use a syringe on an open mold. I'm just going to pour this right into the top. And that's... So I'll have three gray and two white pieces when this hardens. So we're going to let that sit for a few minutes. And it should harden up before I'm done talking because I talk a lot. And I'll keep going. I'll keep talking until these guys set up. That'll be the last thing we look at. So that is basically what you do when you make a mold and cast, or when you make a mold and a casting of a part. So let me get this stuff out of the way. And what we'll do is we'll review the materials that I used real quickly. And hopefully by the time I'm done, these things will have hardened up into solid pieces. And always store your material. I always put the rubber and the resin back in their boxes when I'm done because since they're both yellow and blue, you can mix them up. You don't want to do that. So there's that. There's Umu. All right. So let's... All right, so we're here at AAA Hobbies on Route 30 in Magnolia, New Jersey. We're talking about casting, making a mold, and casting a part. I'm going to take my rubber gloves off here. I'm hoping these parts set up before I'm done. It usually takes about five minutes for these parts to set up and get hard. They, they kick all of a sudden. And you'll see it. The material inside of the cup is already starting to kick. I don't know if you can see that. It's hard to see on the video, but it's starting to harden and turn gray. So that's a good sign. That means these things are going to set up. And I got it on me. Wipe my hands off. I really encourage you to use rubber gloves. You don't want to get this stuff on you. And we'll put the dye back in here. Put that up. Okay. So, if you come in and you want to get started, we do have starter sets. The starter set includes the rubber, the silicone rubber, which is Umu by Smooth On. This is Umu 25. We also sell Umu 30. So you have the Umu rubber, that's the silicone rubber that you make the mold out of. I have the one-to-one -one casting resin, that's Smooth Cast 300. That's the resin that we just put into the mold. Um, this is something I didn't talk about, but it's important. When you do a rubber mold, especially a two-piece mold, there's two prep, two preparation steps that you should do before you inject it with casting resin. The first thing I do is I take the rubber mold and I heat it in a microwave oven for about 30 seconds. If it's a big thick mold, maybe a minute. If it's a big mold, minute and a half. But you just want to warm the mold up. Why do I do that? That helps the casting resin flow better on the inside. And the way that you can cut down the tension or you know surface tension that's on the inside of this mold is with talcum powder or baby powder. You just put a little bit of powder inside the mold, put a little bit in here, just push it in there, and then I close the mold up and shake it. That gets the baby powder around, and that that's what you do before you put or inject this mold. You put a little bit of baby powder in it after you microwave it. Microwave it from 30 seconds to a minute, and then put some baby powder, baby powder in it. Then, I basically take rubber bands, put them around the mold. These are just, bought them at an office store, you know, it's just stationary. Put a couple rubber bands on there that holds the mold together while you work. Then you take your injection syringe and you just inject the resin into it. And like I say, when you put or inject the resin in, you'll see it come out the other side. I like to squeeze my mold a little bit. To get any air out and then I put a little bit more in because air air is the enemy when you're making a casting you don't want any air bubbles in it so that's the basic setup for making a part you take your rubber mold heat it a little bit of baby powder strap it together mix one to one with your resin inject it pop it apart after you know and you'll see there's usually a puddle of resin on top 
after you inject it, you let that harden and you'll see the resin turn white or whatever color. And you, I like to let my parts sit. I like to let the mold sit for maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes, if possible, just to make sure that it's nice and hard. Because if you open it up too soon, the resin could still be soft and it would bend. You don't want to do that. So I'm going to hold these over here so you can see that these parts are setting up. They're still not done yet because I can see they're still clear around the outside of these bases. But you can see these are turning gray. Those are turning white, which means the material is setting up. So once those are done, we'll pop them out. Hopefully I can keep talking here for just a couple more minutes. So baby powder is important. Little Dixie cups for mixing the resin in. These smooth on cups, you can use regular plastic cups. This is for the silicone rubber when you're making the mold. We want a nice hard solid material, but I like these smooth on cups and we, we have them here at the store because they have the gradations on the side so that you know you're mixing a one to one mix. If I mix four ounces, I mix it up to eight ounces when I put the second part in. So all the mixes on this stuff are one to one. You know, so this is what you use to mix the silicone rubber. Um, as I said, when you're making a silicone mold, it's very important to have channel locks so that the mold matches up. And that's what these are. These are little acorn nuts. As you can see, I just bought them at the drug or bought them at the hardware store. They come in little packs. You can use them over and over again. But get them, depending on the size of the mold, you can get them smaller, you can get them larger. It depends on how big the mold is. And I usually at maximum, I've got four of them on here. If it's a bigger mold, I might have six. I might have three on a side, whatever. But those are very important so that your mold line lines up properly. Um, rubber gloves. Well, buy yourself some rubber gloves. Very important. Make sure you have those. Rubber bands. Just a pack of rubber bands. Stirring sticks or craft sticks. You want to get them. These I got at the store here. These are just wooden stirring sticks. Disposable. Make sure you have a bunch of them. Or you can use, like I say, when you're mixing the silicone rubber, get yourself some paint stirrers. And I cut them in half. I just split these right down the middle and I get two out of them. That's for mixing the rubber in the big cup. You want to do that. And clay. Make sure you get clay so that you can set your part. Now, it looks like these parts are done enough that I can take them out of the mold. And you see, that was pretty quick. Um, I was able to, to <laughs> keep talking long enough so that these things started to get hard. And like I say, normally I'll let these things sit for about 20 minutes or so just to make sure that they're solid. Um, we're at AAA Hobbies in Magnolia, New Jersey. If you guys have questions about what I'm doing here, please leave me comments you know, on the page, and I will answer them. This isn't a really hard thing to do, but you kind of have to know what you're doing, you know, the process. And, and as you do it, you get better at it, trust me. When I started doing this, it was a mess. I mean, I couldn't cast anything. Now I can cast pretty much whatever I want. So once these things are solid, you can just, you know, um, bend the mold. As you can see, there's a copy of one of the bases. Let me get, get it into the camera here. And that, that's one of the gray ones. That's the one I did when I put the black dye into the, the resin, as you can see. I only put one drop, so it turned gray. I like gray. It's like primer gray. If I wanted it to be black, I could put a lot more of that in and turn it black. And these, the white ones, these are castings where I didn't mix anything into the resin. This is straight resin. As you can see, they're white. So if you guys like white primer or you want a white piece, you just don't mix anything into it. I've also found that the material, the, cat, the smooth cast, dries or sets up faster without dyeing. I guess the dye slows down the process just a little bit. So if you put dye in, it's going to set up a little bit slower. But that's what I have. That's, that's, pull this over here, and I'll pop the others out here. And as you can see, that's a quick way to make a whole new set. And the one thing you have to do is, if you're doing an open mold like this, you want to take these and put them onto a piece of sandpaper and sand down the bottom so it's flat. All right. So that's what I have today. I have a couple other examples here of molds. This is a figure mold that I did for a little, little boy. And the original figure was carved in wax. And I did a two-piece mold. And 
that's that's what you get. You have a nice hard solid piece. This is wax and this is hard. So this one I can take and I can clean off the seam lines and I can prime them up and paint them. And they'll come out just like a regular model kit. So that's what I have today for you. That was molding and casting, real basics. Um, this is something I could talk about for a long time because there's a lot of ins and outs of doing castings and so forth. But if you're interested in doing copies of things, I can get you set up with a basic starter set with the Umu and the Smooth Cast and get you going. And you can make copies of you know your figures or your bases or, like I say, spare parts or structural things and the like. So that's basics of molding and casting. If you guys have ideas for other things you want me to do, let me know. We've gone to doing Facebook Live on the first Sunday of the month. Coming into the summer, hopefully we're going to do some um, mini four-wheel drive racings on Sundays and some other things so we figured we'd cut back just a little bit of, from doing it every week um, and it's really hard for me to come up with 52 different things to do trust me um, but send me your ideas send me your comments here at AAA Hobbies in Magnolia New Jersey I'll be happy to answer them and until next time keep modeling and I'll see you next time thanks for watching